What's up everyone, it's Simon, and today we're talking time-lapse, motion control, and definitely talking about the Rhino Arc 2 versus the Kessler Second Shooter. I'm out here in West Virginia with Andy from the Ethiopia Project. Check the BTS up there. And we wanted to do a side-by-side -side of Kessler versus Rhino, which I've got my Rhino right there. And we wanted to see which system, how each system performed in the realm of working overseas, traveling, and all of that stuff. And we wanted to put it through real-world paces, which includes carrying everything on your back, and then at the same time, like working out of cars and things like that. So we really wanted to do some comprehensive testing of both systems right next to each other, as close as we can get. Um, super stoked we're jumping into this right now. We're uh, hiking into our first location. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna take a minute and I wanted to talk about each system, what we like about them, what are basically what are the best things about each system. I'm gonna start with the Kessler because it's the one in the front. I, I absolutely love the controls of it. It's nice to, and easy to finesse your movement because you're able to set, isolate, pan, tilt, and slide uh, and make those adjustments individually. Uh, that's not something that's possible right now with the Rhino. Uh, it's something I've talked with the company about, but it's not integrated into the system at this point. Um, then the other thing I like about the Kessler is that it's easy to swap your batteries and change your power uh, because the batteries are removable. The batteries are built into the Rhino, which in a way is great, but it also makes it hard to change batteries. If something happens to the batteries, you gotta take the whole thing apart, the whole nine yards. Um, that is one downer for me in a way, but I also, again, love the fact that it's all just built in nice and tight. Now, when it comes to the actual rails, like I said earlier, uh, this one, even though it's a 28 inch set of rails, only moves about 20 inches. This one actually moves the full 24. And it, if you look, this being the carbon fiber and only using the rails is definitely lighter than the extruded aluminum of this one not a crazy difference. The biggest weight difference is going to be in everything on the carriage with the pan tilt head, whereas this one is obviously a lot smaller, lighter, more nimble, and they actually have a very similar payload which they are able to carry. Uh, big, big difference for me when I'm traveling, just because this doesn't take up nearly as much space in a bag as all of this. Uh, when we went to Ethiopia, we actually had to shimmy stuff around bags to get weight distributed between the bags correctly because of how big and bulky this thing is. Whereas now, this I can throw into a carry-on and call it a day to get it over, and then, like I saw, like you saw when I was walking in, just strap it onto the outside of the bag for when we're walking around each day, and then it's quick, boom, good to go. A lot less stuff to have to deal with. Uh, another thing that I like, which you can do with both systems, is the ability to do a quick release off of it uh, again, that's just personal preference. Uh, and then one of the things that I like about the Kessler is it has a bubble level built in, which is really just a convenience thing. Whereas if you watched my intro to the Rhino video up here, I talked about how I carry a little hot shoe bubble level just so I have the ability to make sure that I'm as level as I can be or exactly where I want to be when it comes to my shot. You have any other thoughts, Andy? No, I think you got them all. Sweet. All right, so we are just chilling on the side of the road, filming this one. And as you can see, we got a pretty sweet view. And one of the things we were discussing while we were setting up this one is the 
drastic difference in the setup between the two kits. Um, one of the, e the biggest changes is the speed because my kit with the Rhino only has one cable as far as like connecting motors and things, whereas Andy's, every motor has to get connected to the controller. So it's just one of those things that's more stuff you gotta carry, more stuff to lose, more stuff to break. Um, just simplifies a lot of things, having it all built into one unit. That is the nice feature with the Rhino that I actually like. Instead of having three Cat5 cables to support all three motors, um, the Rhino has only one. So I like that feature coming from he, He's jealous. All right, all right. So you might be wondering, Simon, why are we uh, why are we back in the studio? Well, I forgot. When we finished the second time lapse, I forgot to record the closing because I was hungry and yeah, it is what it is. So before any further delay, I'm going to run our time lapses right now. While I know these are nothing spectacular, the goal wasn't to go out and get these amazing time lapses. The goal was to test the camera equipment and see if we could find a shot that gave us something worthy of being able to show in the meantime. Uh, what, what, did we, what did we find? with this. And I, I found it interesting how there's a lot of similarities between both systems and I kind of knew that going in because of the fact that I had spent time with both systems. Uh, the things I like about both is able to put them both on backpacks, both able to be broken down, uh, both are about the same weight although it's, ten, or it's uh, about 11 or 12 pounds for each system. And then you've also got a good enough battery that we were able to do what we needed to on both systems. We did two half hour time lapses and also uh, we recorded the Ethiopia video on the same battery and had zero issues with either one. So it was um, pretty, pretty solid, I would, get, I would say. Now, when it comes down to what my preference is, I honestly love the speed of the Rhino. Uh, and when I say speed, I mean the setup time. I, not having all the wires and also the fact that I have everything ready to go. So it's just boom, 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 toss the camera on and go. And having everything where you're not connecting a whole bunch of stuff before you have to go program, uh, I also think that the user interface for the Rhino is a little faster as far as setup versus the Kessler, uh, but they're also very different ways of operating the, the systems. Uh, that being said, one of the things that I love about the Kessler second shooter is the finesse and like the precision you're able to get with your locations that you can't necessarily get with the Rhino. And another thing that I love about the second shooter is the fact that you got a really solid motor for pretty much whatever you're doing. Whereas the Rhino, you've got the high speed motor, which is what I have, that's basically silent, which is great for like a multi purpose time lapse and video rig. However, it doesn't like let you really go at angles and things like that. You got to get a second motor, which is their high torque motor. Uh, and that allows you to do other things, but then you're carrying multiple motors. Uh, so it's just another thing you're carrying around. Is that a big deal for me? No, because for the most part, I'm going to be doing stuff that is fairly flat. If I'm going to be doing motion, just the nature of kind of the projects I'm working on, the high speed motor works just fine for me. Uh, that's what it is. And one of the things we didn't discuss in the video 
while we're on the field was that with the second shooter, you're actually able to put three keyframes in with just the controller unit. If you use their computer aided system, you're able to do a bunch more. But even just with that, the controller this, for the second shooter, you're able to do three keyframes. So you're basically able to go point A, B, C, whereas the Rhino is just point A to point B right now. Hopefully in a firmware update, we get more, but that is what it is. Am I happy with using either system? Yes. Would I use the Rhino over the Kessler every day of the week? Yes. What would make me switch? Not much. If I was you and I was working more like domestically or if I didn't bag space wasn't an issue, uh, I would definitely seriously consider the Kessler because it is a fantastic system. This, I have nothing bad to say about Kessler. It's a great product. It just does not fit exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, the Rhino just was the better fit of a product. And they may come out with something in the future that rivals the Rhino a little closer, but that's not right now. Uh, if you guys have any questions about either of these systems, leave a comment down below because I'd be happy to answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll get Andy to jump on and answer it for me. Uh, be sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Uh, we've got some more stuff coming out about the Rhino system, so stay tuned for that. Other than that, have a great week. I will see you guys next time.